Larry Francis, CEO of the Prince Edward Island Bio Alliance. To get us started, uh, looking at uh, PEI in general, uh, what are its top competitive advantages when attracting FDI? Yeah, Prince Edward Island is a very interesting place, you know, not one of the larger uh, parts of the country uh, and competitive advantages uh, in the bioscience sector in particular. I think we would start with, with our collaborative environment. Collaboration is kind of in our nature, I would say. Uh, very important in terms of uh, companies coming into the province and having that opportunity to connect with businesses, other businesses, research academic institutions and, and government agencies uh, in an environment where uh, we build relationships very quickly. Uh, so that's a very important advantage, I think, in companies that come to Prince Edward Island feel that immediately, that, that sense of partnership and that sense of, um, of relationship. I think the second competitive advantage um, is focus. Um, that we are, you know, we're in the bioscience, biotech sector, certainly, uh, but we don't try to do bio everything. Uh, so, for example, our um, technical uh, areas of focus are biopharmaceutical manufacturing, uh, natural product chemistry, uh, animal health, fish health, uh, diagnostics, um, related areas, but those are kind of the core. So, so our strategy over the years has been to be really excellent at a number of areas of, of market opportunity. So please introduce us to the PEI Bioscience Cluster and how it does uh, to facilitate the growth of uh, the province's biosector. So the Bio Alliance has uh, existed for about 15 years uh, and uh, the model is a cluster development uh, organization uh, we're not a trade organization per se. It's really about the partnership between the business community, the academic and research community, and government partners, investors, uh, and those are all represented around our board table. So the, the uh, structure of the BioAlliance from a governance standpoint reflects the partnership, which is so important to the success we've had over the last 15 years. Uh, so that's the, the kind of uh, essential component of that. Uh, I'd also um, uh, add that these, um, these partners are uh, aligned around a specific strategy. So what really, I think, differentiates uh, how we've uh, accomplished uh, the growth of the sector here has been uh, everyone in the same boat rowing together. So we have a single strategy every three years. We're just actually about to release a new updated strategies, setting new targets, setting new uh, goals for the next five-year period. Uh, and that uh, strategy is developed uh, by the board, by the, that partnership of organizations. So we don't have a situation where we have um, the an academic strategy, a government strategy, a private sector strategy, all kind of pulling in different directions. Uh, and, and so agreeing on priorities, agreeing on uh, allocation of resources, uh, and then executing on that strategy together is, has been really a, a huge part of our success. The uh, cluster has now grown to about 60 businesses in the biosector, um, seven key research uh, partners, research institutions, uh, academic partners, uh, and our government partners. Uh, and that's, uh, they range in, the companies range in size from very small startups to largest companies would be BioVectra with, with almost 500 employees, um, Elanco, uh, Sekisui, you know, these are now multinational companies here in our backyard, uh, and pretty much everything in between in terms of size and scale. Uh, so, uh, so it's become a very dynamic uh, cluster about 2,100 employees uh, in the sector, revenues of about $265 million in 2019. Uh, so, and growing very quickly. And that's really, we're in the midst of a, a very uh, dynamic growth story here in Prince Edward Island in the sector. Could you highlight two or three, either recent or most notable to you, uh, foreign investments? And just tell us maybe the name of the organization, uh, where they're from originally and, and what they do? A recent one would be um, a BioVectra, our largest company. They've been here for a long time, but they were just recently purchased by HIG Capital, uh, which is, again, a multinational 
uh, private equity firm. So BioVectra is, is one of the leading contract uh, development and manufacturers of pharmaceutical ingredients in North America. Uh, and that was started, frankly, from a garage here, here in Prince Edward Island, and, and now it's in that, uh, that category. Uh, so that's a really, you know, been an exciting story to see that company grow and continue to grow very quickly. And now with a, another facility in Nova Scotia, so not just Prince Edward Island, it's expanding beyond our shores as well. Another example uh, would be uh, Elanco, Eli Lilly uh, Animal Health Company, which is now a uh, its its own publicly traded company. Uh, Elanco bought Novartis Animal Health, which bought uh, another small company called Aqua Health. So now Elanco has their business for fish health uh, and vaccine development manufacturing here in Prince Edward Island. So, and they have probably 30% of the global market in, uh, in fish vaccines for the very fast growing aquaculture industry. Uh, so again, another small company, great technology and, and that uh, Elanco uh, and Novartis before them have invested and grown um, that business here in Prince Edward Island. Uh, another example would be Nautilus, uh, a company that was a startup here at the university uh, and uh, its focus is in marine natural products. So microbes uh, harvested uh, from the ocean very sustainably from the Arctic to the equator. Uh, and this bank of microbes has very interesting functional chemistry. If you know how to talk to the microbes and, and through fermentation processes, they're, they're producing functional chemistry, which, which is a, a very uh, important source of uh, future compounds for everything from personal care products to, uh, to cancer treatment and drugs. And it's functional chemistry that is sustainable and it's not, so it's going to replace, those kinds of products are going to replace uh, petroleum-based uh, sources of, uh, of chemistry in all manner of, of products that you use every day. But this is sustainable chemistry, green chemistry uh, that can be, uh, be um, manufactured sustainably and without the, uh, the carbon footprint of petroleum-based sources. Uh, so Nautilus, this technology platform became uh, very interesting to one of its clients, uh, Crota International, which is the largest chemistry company uh, in the UK, a FTSE 100 company. Uh, and Crota decided this was so important to their future and their, and their client's future that they bought the company. And they've invested here in Prince Edward Island as well in some very high-end robotic systems for assay guided fractionation and screening and so on of these metabolites of microbes that live in the ocean. What would you say are the main challenges and opportunities on the horizon? And what is PEI in general, the government, the alliance, uh, the companies that make it up, um, focusing on to make the ecosystem more competitive and of course more attractive? I think the, the the challenges and opportunities are almost one in the same. Uh, the the challenges have come from growth. Uh, we've grown so quickly in the last few years that it's put a good deal of pressure on both uh, infrastructure in terms of space, particularly in for, um, uh, incubation facilities, wet lab facilities, uh, scale up facilities because of our focus on bioprocess and manufacturing. Um, uh, being one, the second being the human resource side of things, skills and training. We've, we've always paid a lot of attention to the human resource side of things. Uh, and so we had to uh, decide, you know, how are we going to find uh, and, and establish that pipeline of talent, which is going to be necessary to, uh, to support the growth of the industries. Uh, so from, from that, we've, uh, th those challenges are, are opportunities. <laughs> so uh, what we are doing you know, right now, for example, on the infrastructure side, uh, we have under construction a 20,000 square foot uh, biomanufacturing incubator, uh, which will be available to companies to scale up manufacturing. That will be completed in June. So it's, it's already well under construction. We also have on the drawing board to come to fruition quite quickly, something we call a bioaccelerator, which again, is focused on uh, scale up uh, manufacturing and incubation of early stage companies. 
Um, on the uh, human resource side, to make sure we, we have the pipeline of talent and, and skilled people that we need, uh, we decided to take matters into our own hands. We've created uh, the Canadian Alliance for Skills and Training in Life Sciences, CASEL by acronym, uh, a very exciting uh, initiative, just you know, less than a year old. Uh, it combines on the academic side, the University of Prince Edward Island, Holland College here in Prince Edward Island, Acadia University in Nova Scotia, uh, as well as the University of uh, Moncton in New Brunswick. That's our academic partnership. Uh, and these, these schools are all establishing undergraduate programs, eventually graduate as well, focused in particular areas of life science and bioscience to create that pipeline of talent. So in specialty areas like bioprocessing, animal health, fish health, diagnostics, uh, and so on. Uh, the second stream of uh, training is uh, called reskilling. Uh, it is uh, working with individuals who are uh, either underemployed or uh, coming out of other sectors of the economy with transferable skills. And we'll be launching in two weeks time, uh, the first cohort, and there'll be multiple cohorts of individuals coming through uh, an online training program, plus an in, in-house in a company, so a workplace integrated learning model for those individuals who will then have an opportunity to go uh, to work full-time with the companies that, um, that they're placed with. And the third track and a really important one is what we call upskilling. And that is where in companies want to invest in their employees, increase their skills in a number of really important areas. So the first uh, effort will be in the biopharmaceutical manufacturing area. We're just completing a a market survey across Canada of companies in this space. Uh, it is a, a program that we've developed in partnership with the National Institute of Bioprocessing uh, in uh, Dublin, Ireland. Uh, we're also uh, in conversations with something called the Biodigital Campus in France, another initiative to also apply a whole uh, series of digital based technologies to skills and training. And that includes uh, uh, hands-on training facilities for biopharmaceutical manufacturing, which we will uh, have here in Prince Edward Island. So, so a very exciting initiative, many moving parts uh, to it, um, but this is not new to us. Each time we see um, a challenge, it's an opportunity and we've taken these kind of opportunities national before. I should mention we've uh, launched here from our cluster, something called Natural Products Canada, which is now a national cluster focused in, in the natural products space with uh, people and infrastructure across Canada. Uh, also our incubation program where we, we call Emergence, which is working with early stage companies, which also now is regional, national and international in scope in terms of uh, the client base There are 50 companies active uh, in their virtual incubator, helping again, early stage companies move technologies through proof of concept uh, into the marketplace. Uh, so we've become quite good at that. And, and I think that's what's attracting uh, investment and uh, money and uh, talent um, to our backyard. What supports would you highlight to foreign investors? What is available in PEI uh, for those wanting to set up shop in the bioscience sector there? First, I think most important, given the kind of clientele we're working with, where these are early stage companies, uh, is a national program, the SHRED program, the Scientific Research Experimental Development Tax Credit Program, very important, big investment by Canada in early stage companies, rich in, in R&D. So that's a very important uh, part of it. I think what we're talking about in, in terms of the skilled, uh, the skills and talent pipeline, you know, CASEL and what we will have uh, in terms of brain power coming through that program, one of the first questions we get asked, and I know it happens in other provinces as well is, can we access the talent to grow our business in Prince Edward Island? And so one of our advantages has certainly been the ability to, to grow, uh, to allow companies to grow based on a great talent pool. And we're investing more in that, as I, as I said. So those are key, I think, those are two key uh, important parts of it. We have matching funds, we have other incentives for companies, but really that's kind of secondary, frankly, to the strategic reason companies are going to be here. And that is the expertise in the, in the various subject matter areas I mentioned earlier, 
uh, that are that are where we uh, understand market, we understand regulatory strategy, uh, we understand business models that are going to allow companies to move from that technology to commercial success. That that's a really uh, a very important strength that we have.